baby doctor here. Dr. Ocott, how you doing? Okay, take some nice okay. easy breaths. I'm gonna take care of the baby when the baby's born. Oh, little boy. The baby's gonna be small. And we're probably gonna need to help the baby breathe. He's delivered in the bag, so you're okay. just waking up. Some A tiny baby boy struggles to take his first breath. <laughs> He's crying very well. Good job, buddy. He is born three months too soon. 28 weeks. Can I take the baby? But doctors are now saving babies even smaller than this one. Two pounds, 12.4 ounces. One's weighing little more than a pound at birth and more than four months premature. Here's the baby. Looks like he's already starting to get tired because he is working harder and harder, even just over these moments that we've been here. Um, he is going to need some help with his breathing. They are sometimes called miracle babies. But are they? Researchers here in Cleveland have been tracking preemies since the mid-1980s. The results, for some, increased risks of mental retardation, cerebral palsy, visual disability, and below average IQs. And the problem is doctors still can't predict which one will be the miracle and which one will be the tragedy. A lullaby is piped into this little world of uncertainty. I can't tell you today who's going to be a Rhodes Scholar and who's going to be in special education. And that is the uncertainty. Dr. Eileen Stork confronts this dilemma every day. It's easy to intubate a baby and apply all life support system. But I think you have to constantly think of what you are doing and what the end product will be. <laughs> the smaller the child, the greater the risk. A textbook case, this baby, born at 26 weeks. He weighed one pound, 11 ounces at birth. And this little one has the most serious complication of prematurity, and that is a bleed into the brain. What's the prognosis? Well, he has a 50% chance of having some neurologic residual problem. It's very Children this young have thin, fragile blood vessels. When they burst, the effect can be devastating. 50-50 chance. Yeah. Not great odds. I wouldn't like those odds. How do you feel when you're looking at something like this? I don't know. 50-50 chance. Sad on one hand, but... It depends on whether you think the glass is half full or half empty. If anyone could have a chance at a really good outcome, it would be Luther. Back in 1992, Dr. Stork's colleague, Dr. Marty Miller, cared for Luther Ward Perry and his twin sister. At the time, I said, these little twins don't have a chance in the world. You saw Luther on 48 Hours. He is one of the smallest children we've ever had survive. Hey. Bless you. They were born to Tamika and Luther Perry at 23 weeks. <laughs> nearly four months early. They came out. They did great. You know, the daughter, she, she hung on for a month, three days. They lost their daughter, but Luther, according to Dr. Miller. Luther is just, he's just a star. He's breathing on his own. I mean, and that is absolutely incredible. <laughs> he's so goofy. Incredible and so was the hospital bill. Luther's four months stay cost almost a half million dollars and his survival was seen as a triumph of medicine and the infant's will to live. Now, that doesn't say that he's not at risk for long-term complications. I can't wait to take him home. He could have deafness, he could have cerebral palsy, he could have mental retardation. I don't know if he's gonna be a football player, a basketball player. Uh oh, he's coming to burn something. Now, three years later, as Luther Perry gets ready for his first day of school... Why? You don't want to go to school? That miracle birth is tempered by harsh reality. I'm going to school. You want to stay home? Stay home. No, you're going to school. I had to go, you're going to. He is not deaf, but he does have mild cerebral palsy. First day of school. Below average intelligence. Get in there and play with all the other little kids. Slow growth. Good morning, Luther. 
and he must attend a special class for the disabled. Oh, where'd the baby bud go? Tell her to make play with Right there. Thanks, Ron. Good talking. His ability to understand language, of course, is a little more developed than his use of it. Psychologist Nancy Downs evaluated Luther Perry for his preschool program. He's going to need a lot of adaptions to learn to do what some children at three would find everyday things. Using a spoon, using a fork, spreading with a knife when you give him a jar of peanut butter, getting his coat on. Over your head. Where are you? Are you in there? You want you know, him to have a, you know, a fair shake in life like a normal kid. Oh, are his gloves stuck in the sleeves? There you go. But the Perrys know now that could be a difficult goal. When he gets to like the fifth or sixth grade, it's going to be rough on him. Okay. They're going to like tease him, make fun of maybe his walk. We're going to the gym. Good walking, Luther. Brandon, come on now. Brandon Perry was born a year after Luther. No. Yes. He, too, was born prematurely, but only by one month. He runs around, gets into a bunch of trouble, climbing, jumping, crawling. Go ahead, Luther, make a basket. Go ahead, make a basket. Up, oh, almost. It is hard for their father not to compare the two boys. It's like he almost says, oh, well, I just give up. If he falls down, he'll just, like, maybe just, like, sit there. But we didn't it hurts. I mean, you know, because it's like if you ever get to a point where you just like totally want to like give up, shut down, or whatever, then it's it's going we're gonna be stuck. Do you think it's good that you're trying to save more children? A few years ago, I might have said no because the risk was so great and the anguish for the families just seemed unbelievable. But I've seen so many very good babies. Now, albeit they're million-dollar babies. Are they literally million-dollar babies? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Multi-million? Sometimes. Some parents claim that many times the doctors won't pay any attention to them when they say we want to discontinue the life support. I've had only the opposite experience, where I have sat down with a family and presented problem after problem of a major degree. And in that circumstance, I recommend withdrawing support. And this is the kind of advice Luther's parents say they got from their doctors. We will recommend that, you know, in other words, pull the plug. Make them noises. But basically, if we had to pull the plug, then on per se both of them, then right. Luther wouldn't be here today. Look at what he got, Mom. <laughs> what you get? Whoa. We're proud of him. What's this? I'm proud of you to Luther a great first day. He's turned into a little boy. Do you have fun? Yes? Yes. Yes. He's a miracle baby. Deep breath, deep breath, deep breath. Go push. At the end of Dr. Stork's day, All right. yet another miracle. That's beautiful. There it is. Look at this. The birth of perfectly healthy, premature twins. And also a reminder of why the decisions concerning premature children are so agonizing. It looks like she's smiling. There's a human bond there, and it happens very quickly. You love me too. It's often very complete, and you don't just cut those ties. Give me some sugar. 